How's everybody feeling tonight? All right. All right, Emerald Lagasse here. We got a big show for you tonight. Welcome to Emerald Live. You know, what comes to mind is what we want to know right now. We've been doing this pool thing, you know, that polling thing. At least we can count numbers, you know? <clears throat> yeah. So what do you guys think of when you think of home cooking? Somebody? What? Soup. You think of soup? Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Apple pie. Apple pie. Apple pie. Apple pie. <coughs> Gravy. Biscuits. Biscuits. Chicken and dumplings. Love that. Chicken and dumplings. All right. Anybody else? Going once. Going twice. What do you think of? Grandma. 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 Spaghetti and meatballs. Spaghetti and meatballs. Spaghetti and meatballs. All right. Spaghetti and meatballs. Jambalaya. Jambalaya. <laughs> well, sweet potato pie. I'm going over to this side. I think of very simple dishes with big flavors and all of those that we mentioned, right? Hearty one-pot meals, right? Prepared with love. Those dishes like sitting in Hilda's kitchen, waiting for her to dish up. Or maybe you sitting in my kitchen while I dish you up some gumbo, you know? Bada bing, bada bang. All right. Tonight I'm gonna share with everybody here and you at home a couple of my favorite home cooking dishes right now. I mean, what we're doing now, today, all right? I'm gonna show you how to make a turkey bolognese. Oh, yeah, man. I haven't done this on a show in a long time. I thought I'd do tonight a little duck and sausage etouffee. Haven't done that. And then chicken pot pie from scratch. And chicken pot pie from scratch. Chicken pot pie from scratch. Right here on Emerald Live. Cliff, how are you, buddy? Good to see you. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Okay. You're the best. Welcome to you, too. Thank you. Tell, tell them louder. Say you. it again. You're the best. Thanks. I need a raise. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, we uh, really seriously had a little, took a little poll, you know, that WW thing. Or you certainly can write in, too. Uh, there'll be a, an address on the screen. We do these every now and then, but it's like home cooking. What happened to that home cooking stuff, right? And I really want to show you this. These are dishes that I'm making at home probably almost every week. Simple, quick, kids love them, neighborhood loves them. <laughs> See, my neighborhood, it's the whole, you know, 70130 zip code is the neighborhood, you know. <laughs> oh, he's cooking again. <laughs> Anyhow, we had uh, fried chicken, of course, right there on the top of the list with coleslaw. That was uh, in the old top 10 list. I didn't think this would make it. I thought this was like kind of gone out. I thought this was popular back in Julia's days, right? Green beans almondine made the old list, right? How many of you still doing green beans almondine? Really? Well, all right. Hey, I love them. Oh, my friends over there in the front, spaghetti and meatballs, way, way up there. Meatloaf and french fries. Mashed potatoes was way up there. And roasted chicken, that was up there too, roasted chicken. Doc, what's your like favorite home food? Oh man, biscuits. Biscuits, I'm with you on that too. Sweet How about potatoes. you, Cliff? Chicken? chicken, like roast chicken? Yes. Roast chicken for Cliff too. All right, I'm gonna show you with uh, 
my girls at home what one of theirs favorite is. I got to like make this almost every week. No joke. Show you how simple. Now, traditionally, where this dish was inspired from would be a place in Italy called Bologna. You know, ragus, a lot of good stews. And generally, this would be made with a combination of either veal or in some places, veal, pork, and beef. I kind of like the veal, pork, and beef thing. However, one of my daughters doesn't eat beef, veal, or pork. <laughs> and I wasn't going without the dish. <laughs> so, today, it's super popular with ground turkey, right? You can buy this stuff everywhere. Lean, really super lean. So, why, let it, why should it let it stop us from doing a little bolognese? Watch what we're going to do. Good olive oil in a little pot like this. Then, no, that wasn't a lot. A bottle would be a lot. That was like a shot. Just was trying to be polite. Not a shot of olive oil. Now, first thing you do, take that ground turkey, okay? Combination of ground turkey. They have, you know, different pots. And we want to stop browning in this olive oil, our brown, our turkey. Well, not, it's not going to be like pieces like this. Here's the whole key, folks. Okay? You can stop browning this in the olive oil. And as it starts browning, we're going to stop busting away little pieces like this and stop browning this. You're going to see. Now, while that's happening, I got onions, celery, carrots, 140 cloves of garlic. <laughs> Then I use, you know, get the old, you better believe it. Get the old, you know, good canned stuff. You want to use fresh, use fresh. The whole secret with like tomato sauce, red sauce, bolognese sauce, I try to do this like the day before. You got to let it cook. You got to let it simmer. All right, look, I'm going to stop browning this meat. When we come back, I'm going to show you more of this bolognese sauce. And then I haven't done an etouffee in so long. Wait till I show you the technique on that. Don't even think about touching that dial. Stick around. We'll be right back. Thank you. All right, welcome back, everybody. Emma Lagasse here. We're uh, doing some home food, and uh, seriously, I'm doing some dishes that I do for the family all the time. First, this turkey bolognese with a shot of olive oil. <laughs> See what you want to do is you want to brown the turkey meat like that in the olive oil. It doesn't have a lot of fat in it, turkey, okay? Unless you buy it with fat in it. You buy those turkey packs ground, for the most part, they're 96 up fat free, you know, whatever that is. Well, I mean, that's what it says. I mean, have you ever, like, called the turkey police on them? <laughs> you know, they come out with that little needle. You know. Well, we won't go there. So, once the meat start breaking it up like this, okay? Now we're gonna like make it happy. It's not happy right now. It's just a little bit happy. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's okay. <laughs> so, generally what I would do is I would get this little Italian seasoning blend instead of like trying to get a hundred ingredients out of the, you know, the cabinet, but we're gonna add a little fresh thyme. We could all use more of that. Some uh, bay leaves, at least, ah, uh, four or five, <laughs> depending on the size. All right, we got some more thyme in there. No stems, you know. All right, 
Save the stems for something else. That was a little more time. Now, we don't have any oregano, but that's all right. A little bit of parsley. Hilda's happy now. <laughs> all right, now, once it browns like this, step number two. Chopped onions. Oh, yeah. Some celery. You gotta have a little carrot like this in bolognese, not only for the color, but it's gonna give it a little sweetness, okay? And then, of course, however many cloves to make you happy. <laughs> now, we're gonna cook that. We're gonna cook that four or five minutes, just so that it gets. Now, we're gonna make it even happier. We didn't add any seasoning right yet. We got to add a little bit of salt. <laughs> Fresh ground pepper, you got to have a little bit of that in there, you know. <laughs> Gonna add a little bit of essence just to. <laughs> now, it's getting happy now. You know what I like? Sometimes when I'm in one of those modes, kind of mess with my daughters, you know, I get a little crushed red pepper, too. Jack it up a little bit. Good thing. Okay. Like I said, four or five minutes, stir, stir, stir. Now comes the liquid part of this. You want to add a couple of cups of chicken stock. If you're keeping it vegetarian or whatever, then add, like, vegetable stock or water. That's number one. Two, good tomatoes. I use half sauce, half whole tomatoes. You can use crushed if you want. And one of those small little things of that paste stuff, right? <laughs> so I add that in there. That's the sauce. Then I go in there and I usually, you know, but that, that's me, you know. I like that. Some of you may not. For me, hey. That is a beautiful thing for me. So, then I, you know, I usually rinse out cold water, you know, put the cans. Hey, I, you know, what can I say? I had no crayons when I was a kid, you know? <laughs> Sorry. Rinse them out, little water in there. Okay, then you get the small little... You know, this is, you got to, like, get another spoon. It won't come out. Never, you know, you know what I mean. This is what's going to give it the base. All right, look. Joking aside. Bring it up to a boil. Oh! I almost didn't tell you my secret. Huh. Usually, fresh or canned, these things are a little acidity. You know, canned tomatoes, a little bit. Nice pinch of sugar. Bam! You can kind of bam it like that. You know, get excited. I don't have any sugar. I'll get some. Pinch of sugar. Bring it up to a boil. Let it simmer. Forget about it. You know what I mean? Now, back over here on the ranch. I want to start this etouffee. How am I going to do that? I got a duck. I got a butcher to duck up. The butcher will do that for you, too. See, here's the breast. I got the wing. Be careful with this, you know. You can use a knife, be civilized, or you can get a whack at one like that, and it's done. Okay? We'll be civilized. Okay, G is, we're trying to shoot for a G rating. Okay. <laughs> civilized. You think they ever say that with all them scary movies that come out? No. Anyhow, we won't go there. Okay, so really nice, Ginger. We just... <sighs> Now, we're going to cut these in pieces. That's the point I'm trying to make. Okay? All right. Now, duck fat. <laughs> Nothing wrong with duck fat. If we were small, if we lived in a miniature, you know, in a country, we'd have these as coats. <laughs> you know? I would be wearing one. My whole body would be feeling good. <laughs> Anyhow, I'm going to julienne this duck fat, and I'm going to start rendering it down. That means, you know, get the fat out. When we come back, another notch! Stick around! Watch this!
Nazi. Stop giving some flips. Just joining us, we are making some home cooking here. We took a little poll here in our audience. Took a little poll on that WW thing. You know, foodtv.com. <laughs> We're waiting for this to come to a nice boil, us bolognese. Had a question on the commercial break, whether you use wine in there. Traditionally, I don't, but you can. You could use white, you could use red. Um, this here, basically bolognese, you need a little bit of liquid after this to thin this down. Generally, what's used is a little bit of milk, okay? I'm going to show you that trick later. So we're letting that to come up and start simmering. Meanwhile, I told you that we were preparing our duck. Took all the fat off the duck. Didn't have to be as perfect as that coat we made. <laughs> Had some pieces of the breast, the legs, et cetera, et cetera. Then what we did is we took the fat and we just sort of chopped it up. We didn't julienne it up because we're not really making cracklings, although I could like be in the mood for cracklings. I love cracklings, but you see what I've done? I'm rendering these down. I started with no oil, mm -hmm. and I'm just rendering these down right here as these are getting crisp. The fat is coming out from the skin. Beautiful thing. Oh, because now what we're going to do is we're going to use this as a roux to make our etouffee. Before I do that, over here, I've got our duck pieces, some essence, and a little bit of flour, okay? And what we're going to do, either in some of that duck oil, <laughs> a little skillet like this, what we're going to do, I'm going to show you, is I'm going to start browning some of our pieces of the duck. Now, especially the legs, because the breasts will cook really simple. These pieces here, and we'll cut them up later on. So we're going to start browning these first. All right. Now, when that happens, oh, it is coming to a boil. All right. Generally, what I do now is I turn this down to a little simmer, okay? Because what you want is this evaporation, which is making this concentrate. That's the whole thing of a great red sauce. Sometimes Sunday mornings get up, uh-huh, little paper, uh-huh, little coffee, uh, I make bolognese, I leave it on the stove like six or eight hours. Won't go there right now. Now, this is the sugar. My secret, about that much. <laughs> it was about that much. <laughs> All right. We're back over here in crackling land. Now, what we're going to do, I'm going to show you. We're going to take these pieces of the duck. Oh. All right, we do these in Louisiana with the pork skin. Ooh, man. We may end up making cracklings anyhow, but right now, we're just going to take them out because I want to show you why we're using this. Why we got this is we're using this right here. Now, let's season them just in case we do. All right, now, now what we're going to do is we're going to add the flour, okay? And we're going to steer this flour into making this a brown roux. Turn the heat down. That's the whole secret with etouffee, the whole secret with the gumbo, okay? It's a food of love thing. People try to rush that, all right? You can't do that. You got to use the dial, okay? That's why it says medium. Now, generally on medium, slowly, you stir this like this. How long for a good gumbo? How long for a good etouffee? About two beers. 
okay? When you can drink two beers, it's generally a brown enough. Just telling you from experience, this is home cooking here, you know? Have a bad Sunday, I burn the roux, I drink a six pack, do it three times. Help. Sorry, honey, dinner's coming soon. All right, now, here's the deal. Medium heat. See how brown this is right now? Okay? Seriously, that's going to take about maybe 30, 40 minutes, nice and slow. I'm a fast drinker. What can I say? <laughs> then, as soon as that happens, we're going to add the trinity. We're going to add some onions, bell pepper, some celery. Then we're going to add some salt. Yeah, I mean, I don't know where you buy your onions and celery. Mine don't come seasoned. <laughs> Got some cayenne. Now we're going to work this into that. Meanwhile, we're going to turn over our duck. See, we're getting it nice and brown like that. See that? Oh, yeah, babe. All right. You ain't seen nothing yet, I promise you. All right, look. I got the duck pieces going on. I got some andouille sausage. I'm going to let this go on. When we come back, I'm going to show you how to finish this etouffee. Stick around. All and Cliff. That was, uh, that was one of their new cuts. I got the blues. I got the blues. I got the etouffee blues. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. All right. <laughs> Doc Rue, Trinity, happy, happy, happy right now. Now, watch how happy we're going to make this. Real time, we're not like flopping no goose or anything in here on this show, you know what I mean? Real cooking, nice brown roux, Trinity's happy, added some garlic. You want some more, you can add a little bit more garlic, okay? Andouille yeah. sausage. You add that just a little bit right at the end like that. We're just going to wake up the sausage a little bit because it's, it's kind of, you know, it's a pork fat thing. Yeah. You chop it up, it kind of like goes in a shock a little bit. You know, it's just, just kind of there. Once you add it in there, oh, oh, it's happy. You kidding me? Smiling at me right now over here. So we're going to render that. Meanwhile, we browned off the duck pieces. We let them cool, okay? You can do this with chicken, turkey, whatever. Started cutting it up, chopping it up, okay? What do I mean by that? Okay, we let it cool. That's what we did here. See? Letting it cool. Then you can just take them like this, take the meat off the bones. It's not going to be fully cooked. You are going to have still a little blood, you see? Mm -hmm. Don't worry. I'm going to take that up like that. I generally don't even throw any of this stuff away either. I generally just put it back in a pot and make another stock for another soup, maybe a bean soup or something like that. Oh, yeah, babe. All right, so you got the, you got the gist of that cut up, happy, nice. If you want to leave the legs whole like that, you know, kind of like the uh, flower guys, you know, surprise them. It's a beautiful thing. I don't go there. I don't just... Anyhow... Now that the sausage is happy, 
This is where it's kind of a questionable thing that you got to ask yourself. Self! <laughs> I do that in my house. It's unbelievable. <laughs> so, generally it says back, yes! <laughs> this is when it's a call. You want to add beer, you don't want to add beer. You want to add beer, great. You don't want to add beer, if not, just the stock. Generally what I do... <laughs> No, no, let me tell you the reason why. Generally why I do is because this is cold and that's hot. And the thickening agent thing, one's got to be one temperature, the other's got to be the other temperature. You with me on that? If this was hot and that's hot, we got lumps. If this is cold and that's cold, we got lumps. But if that's hot, see, my stock's hot, I'd have lumps. Then you, like, look like a fool. So, generally, self says... Why well, look like a fool? So I generally just add a little bit of that, drink a little, add a little, you know, just whatever, you know. Now, what's going to happen is, you see what it's going on here now? Cold and hot, they're having a battle. It's like that, you know, that war game. Yeah, see how it's getting thick? When you do this, when you work with a roux, cornstarch, arrowroot, whatever, it will never be at its full thickening power until it comes to a boil. So you won't know how thick it's really going to be until it comes to a boil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then, now I'm going to start taking, since I've tempered my roux now, I'm going to start tempering it with some of my stock. I'm using chicken stock, you can use duck stock, beef stock. If you use water, just season it, okay? Because I don't know where you get your water. My water don't come seasoned. <laughs> generally out of one of them jugs, and it says lack of salt, generally. So, you know, you got to season it. All right, we're going to bring this up right here to a, uh, to a boil, and I'm going to show you what we're going to do. What I'm going to do, we're going to get it, we're going to cook it a little bit, then we're going to add this duck back into it. It's going to get happy. Then I got another surprise for you. Shh. Shh. Don't tell. All right. I had a question on the break. Emerald, is that sauce going to be thick enough? Basically, no. I mean, it's going to be fine. But I like to cook. Look, it's already coming out great. You ask me, hey, I'm telling you a straight answer. I want to cook this. In my house, I want to cook this at least four hours, similar like this. It's like a food of love thing. Smells the whole house up, you know? Oh, yeah, man, I'm fishing in the fish tank. <laughs> For like a couple of hours. Yeah. Unbelievable. One time I had this simmering about six or eight hours, I was getting this look. <laughs> I was like, oh, don't tell me. Wait. Anyhow. So, it's going to be thick enough for this exercise. Now, while this is happening over here, this is happening over here, i got to show you one of my other favorite dishes. Take a chicken, regular chicken. Right? Yay! <laughs> Wash it really, really good. Put it inside the pot. Cover it with water. Oh, not enough. Show's canceled. <laughs> you got to cover it with water. Just until, see, he's starting to, like, do that little float thing. <laughs> then, some peppercorns, some bay leaf. However many you like. I like bay leaf. Couple of stalks of celery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeez. <sighs> Pressure. Peeled carrot. You want to peel them. But you can use the end like this. Same thing with the, uh, the onion. <laughs> Just kind of cut it up a little bit in pieces. You don't have to be fancy, okay? Salt, cayenne, pepper, bring it up to a boil. We're going to let it simmer. When we come back, I'm going to show you my delicious chicken pot pie and a treat right here with Duck A. Touffet. Stick around.
Welcome back, welcome back, Doc Gibbs. Yeah. I gotta apologize to the studio studio audience because we've been here now, what, maybe three hours or something, you know, four, four hours. Have not finished one dish yet. I'm under a lot, a lot of pressure right now. I'm out of stove space. I'm gonna have to go to Sarah Moulton's place in a little bit here. I'm trying. Bear with me. Keep it down to a minimum. I'm under a lot of pressure right now. All right. First of all, the etouffee. We're going to take one of these casserole dishes like this, you see? We're going to spoon it right in here. That sausage, the duck meat. You can feel the love in here, right? All right. Now, I got my buddies over there. Top ten, they said biscuits. So I'm going to show you a little surprise that I got. Oh, yeah, just wait. What we're going to do is we're going to spoon all this etouffee right inside of this casserole like this, you see? And then I'm going to show you what we're going to do. We're going to take a very simple buttermilk biscuit dough. All right? And I'm going to show you, instead of just the dull old, hey, you put that right on rice, you'll be happy, happy right there. All right, look, here we go. Kicked up for you guys over there. I took, I took some basic buttermilk biscuit dough, instead of cutting them out, folded some black pepper in it, right? Watch this. We'll just drop them right on top of this etouffee like this. Okay? Look, just little drop biscuits like this, okay? 375 degrees. I'm under a lot of pressure right now. 375 degrees. All right. Go to sleep for a while. Now, just before that, I stirred the bolognese. Oh, so happy. Okay, watch this now. The chicken came up to a boil about 45 minutes. Took the chicken out of the water. Put the pot with the water, the vegetables on the stove, which is right here. Let it simmer for about 45 minutes. Evaporation, concentration, intense flavor. That's what I have right here. After an hour and a half, I reduced it down to three cups, so I got this very powerful chicken stock. Eh, eh, doesn't matter. Whatever you want to do. Eh, eh, whatever you want. Now, in this pot right under here, I'm going to start with a little bit of butter. Just a little. Then, what I'm going to do now, it's getting close to coming soon. I'm going to add that little bit of that, like that quarter cup of milk to the bolognese, okay? Now, when the butter starts cooking like it is right now, I'm going to add some onions, some carrots, <laughs> some celery, okay? Then what I'm going to do is this. Gonna cook this for a little bit, bam! Some salt and pepper. I'm gonna cook this maripois about four or five minutes. Then, I'm gonna make a roux. Right in that for our pot pie. But, oh yeah, babe, but before that, I'm hearing it calling if you know what I'm talking about. Take that nice pasta. If you use these pasta things, be very careful that steam don't burn your little hands there or your face, or your eyebrows, for that matter, right? <laughs> Drain it real good. <laughs> Come on, Johnny. <clears throat> now, we'll add that pasta right there. No problem. No problem. Happens all the time. Okay, mix it up like that, no problem. Now, let's check the bolognese out. 
Is it thick enough? Perfect. Is it feeling good enough? Yeah. Is it happy enough? Yeah. All right, look. I'm going to spoon some more love on this thing right here, okay? That nice turkey bolognese. Going to finish our roux over here when we come back. One more notch! Stick around! Okay. So I want to recap, after the chicken was in the pot, 45 minutes to an hour, depending on the chicken, it, it'll float, you know. Take the chicken out of the pot, now you got this delicious stock, salt, pepper, right? Let it reduce down, concentration, evaporation, beautiful. Chicken's cool, take the skin, you want the skin, great, got the chicken meat. You with me? Yeah. We'll do that the day before. Then when you're ready, little butter, flour, make a roux. La, 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 la. <laughs> Onions, carrots, celery, whatever you like. Squash, whatever you want to put in there. Then, I got a little mushroom. See, not too thick. Then I'm going to add the chicken meat back in. I love them peas, you know? Right, yeah. Oh, yeah, babe. Kick it up with a little more garlic. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Now... Just fold that in. This doesn't need a lot of cooking. We're going to bake this in the oven anyhow. Turn it off. Let it get a little cool. Then what we're going to do, I'm going to do these individual style with a ramekin and a little bit of puff pastry that I got these. Yeah, you can buy that stuff now, you know? Here I am driving Miss Daisy. <laughs> now, let's go check on our uh, etouffee. Oh, yeah, we had it. We had it kicked up with the kicked up biscuits, right? Look at that, huh? See those kicked up biscuits like that? Come on up here. I put that etouffee. I put that etouffee just like that right over. All right, you got it. All right, check it out. There we go. Little etouffee right over there. All right, there you go. All right, come back in a minute. Come back in one minute. All right, now, here we are. Take the ramekin. Fill up the ramekin. Don't all put the stuff in there. You got to get some of that juice, right? Now, let this cool. Yeah, you're supposed to let it cool. I got them police. Take like an egg wash and brush the crust. You see? Yep. Then we're going to take it, fold it right over like such. Press them down. Great thing is you can do this ahead of time. Make a little slit in there so that it steam escapes. 30 minutes in the oven. And this is what you have in 30 minutes. See that? Serve it just like this. Voila! Oh wait! Bam! Okay, there you have it. Little chicken pot pie. Home cooking, Emma Lagasse. I want to thank you all. See you tomorrow. Everybody.